out. Yeah, we went, we made our way to a four-way intersection and immediately, without even ta thinking about talking about it, split the party four ways, which was pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and the last thing uh, that has happened is you all have um, come to a cavern that is uh, at the, all right. the ancient tomb. Tree is opened into a cavern and um, there was a mist on the ground and uh, someone dispelled the mist. I think somebody cast Dispel Magic or something. Yeah. 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 And uh, so that definitely got rid of the mist and there was a, a woman on a rocky outcropping here and uh, she had two bags and at first she said, whatever you do, don't touch the bags. And then she was like, actually take the bags and then it's, and sure enough somebody took the bags i can't remember who took them i think it was, it was sean. Faith. sean faith it was faith yeah, yeah. she, she took the bags murderer. and then bam she disappeared and definitely is not maybe murdered now was murdered it was a murder we all saw it yeah and then now you all have two bags as well and i will tell you what is wait did you already get what's in the bags yes you got some uh no no, we had, oh, we had no idea what Tell us what's in the bag, and we'll we'll let you know. Okay, uh, I will tell you. Um, you have a sack that contains a whole bunch of money, um, fifty each of every currency. Um, Very specific. And then one of the bags, you realize as you reach in it, your whole arm goes down into it, even though the bag's only that long. And, uh, but you can still feel things inside. They cannot be allowed to have this one as well. Yeah, she does have like two of those. Can Ardrith, uh, get that one? Sure, you have a bag of holding now. Well, is, it, is that okay with the rest of the party? I don't care. I assent. Since you guys made it here and you're here early and on time and all that stuff, uh, Jake, who's next for a magic item? I feel like it's Caleb. I feel like it's Din, but Din did get a magic item recently. So who's who's up next for a magic item? Or yeah, is I've actually got a lot. I'm actually pretty. I pretty think a lot of us are actually wealthy. kitted out for magic items. Pretty kitted yeah. out. I don't know about Kriv and Ardor. Those are the two that I don't know. Like, yeah. I, no, they don't have many. They don't have many. Okay. Well then, Ardrith, you find in the bag when you search around in it a ring. Right. Uh, oh, I think I mentioned this even. The ring is shaped like a uh, in a, a feather that twists around your finger, it. and it has a golden insert in the middle. <sighs> we don't have any wizards with us, do we? No, we sold them all. <laughs> I don't think I have any scrolls or anything to be able to. I just had the worst idea anyone's ever had. We have Kaber's Candle, which can cast the Gate Spell, which can be used to forcibly teleport a being that we know the true name of that is on a different plane to our location. And I've been trying to think what beings we know the names of that would be really useful. And I just want to put it out there. Finkel. He's a wizard. He has fingers. He knows things. Uh, yeah, but he also said that he was like stopping a multiverse collision on a different plane. So I feel like if we interrupted... On a different plane. Right. That's just the plane we need him on. But I mean, but if he he stops doing that and then comes here, then we have the whole situation of his situation not being resolved, and then we all die because of his problems. And I and honestly, I feel like our problems are enough. Do we need more problems from different planes? We could. Is there? Uh, we could get uh, euthanasia back. You know, the, the girl who had the first place and ask her. Who is this? I don't I don't remember euthanasia. He Caber just like points to the trees like the lady that was right there. We don't want her. 
Well, why not? She probably because knows. Because she asked Faith to murder her. Okay, Being but... useful is clearly not in her itinerary right now. Okay. Alright, good point. Sure. Uh, we could get my dad back. That is an option. We also have the name of the unicorn in the lake. Uh, the other is your dad is also an option. Well, is, is there a check that I can do to at least figure out if it's cursed or not? I you can like an arcana check? There is a check. Or... You can put it on. <laughs> yeah, I can put it on. That's right. But that might, hey, Kriv, that might we need a finger. A bad, bad idea. I don't think so. Look, I've been through that a lot, and he looks really bad <coughs> and distracted looking. I'd like to step into this tree carcass and see if there's any writing or etching on the walls or the inside of this snag. Um, it looks like a natural grove of some kind, which doesn't make any sense, given that, given that this is a closed cavern. Do I sense any fairy magic coming from it whatsoever? Um, well, it was magical, at least. Uh, you know, it was surrounded by mist, and there was a woman here, and she disappeared, and there's... A magic sack with magic items, so like it's clearly was magical, but as far as like you know, uh, what's going on here? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think there's any way for you to. I just didn't know if I could tell if there's like any way to explain how this tree got here or what's right. doing here. No, I don't think so. I think uh, I think you would need. Uh, to either cast some kind of spell, like scry or something, I don't know, like some kind of magical, or maybe oh. legend lore again or something. Um, yeah. but... Fifth level slot, so I don't know how to do that. Um, I think Caper would also recommend uh, to put in the hat of names that we can call upon. There's also the Storm Warden. We can call upon him to, what was his name? The Nature Warden. Uh, Ickyus, that was Ickyus. it. Ickyus. Yes. Uh, there's that name too. Uh, anyway, I'd like to look behind the tree because we haven't really explored further into this room. I don't want to make sure we're not missing something in here. Sure. Um, Faith, on the other hand, uh, she uses one of her divine sense things and she says, This place is actually wholly consecrated ground. Uh, holy concentrated ground? It's consecrated. The gods, uh, someone has given a sacrifice here to protect this place from the undead and evil. Oh. Okay. Uh, Weird. not... So Ooh. you're saying we could get a short rest here? Uh, you could absolutely do a short rest if that were helpful. I think we've got some people missing some missing some hit points. But however many short rests you can do, and I can't remember, there's a limit. I don't remember. No, there isn't. You can you can short rest all day long. And if you do, then it's a long rest. <laughs> well, short rest can be interrupted. Uh, in betwixt the short rest and not the long rest. That's true. Well, I'll make a note. Do you all want to do a short rest? Yeah, I, I think so. I think this is a good time for it. We're not dead yet, but we are missing some health. And so, uh... A short rest on some consecrated ground. I will inform... Uh, the others, if and when they get here... That, uh... Let me check on if and when they get here, that a short rest was taken. Well, I'm missing seven hit points. 
the proper amount of dice to roll should I have one d8 plus three should one cover it I think one should cover it but I could get unlucky I think two would guarantee it and also you probably have some despair yeah it's true like I have, I have 20 hit dice so I'm 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 not in it. I can afford to not be stingy all right. I, I think I think that is more or less the limitation that, that you were sort of asking after Ross is you do have a limited number of hit die you can spend, so you can't just regenerate an infinite number of of hit points by long resting over and over again. The astonishing thing to me, and it makes sense by the math, but Thomas brought this to my attention. Uh, I just never would have played this way. It just would never have made sense to me. But it's fine if if it's in the rules, whatever. Is that you could just take all of them? I guess. Uh, if, if that's if that's right, I never played that way. I I had always played uh, like you have a certain number of hit dice you can use um, on a short rest, not not just like I'm going to use all my hit dice. Um, that blew my mind. But is that right? Yeah, you have a certain number of hit dice that equal to your level. So we're and you can just you can just use all of them. You can use all of them if you want to, but then next time you get a short rest, you don't get any benefit. Right, sure, but it still just blew my mind. I was like, what the world? But okay, you know, like, it's fine. Anyways, I made a note for everybody, um, and this is Consecrated Ground. You're probably not going to be able to determine anything unless you use magic. Uh, I don't think anyone here would know what's going on here. There's just no way that, that anyone would know that. There's no markings. There's no... We also... Uh, before I forget, just because we're here, uh, I can perform a dance while we're short resting, and whenever they roll a hit die, you get an extra 1d12 hit points. So, I should have noted that too. So, that's, that's good. Because that is, that is one of their most powerful features that I, I've never ever used to be. Because we, we very rarely short rest, it's either long or nothing, basically, for us. All right. Ardith is going to put on his ring. Okay, you put on the ring, and uh, you suddenly feel very light. Oh, now I know what that ring is. <laughs> uh, is there any other exits from this room that I can see? Uh, you check the walls. Uh, you're certain that there's no exits in this room. And, in fact, um, that's something that... Uh, Faith, well, first of all, Catawan brings up, Catawan's like, brothers, we've we've checked the other halls and corridors back behind us, and we didn't see anything. And Faith was like, well, I didn't go all the way down the corridor that I saw, and nothing shot out of the wall. Things shot out of the walls on the other corridors that you all were at. There's still an exit, which is the way we came, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. If we go back, so it sounds like if we go back to the intersection and then go north, we had not yet encountered a wall. So, let's let's try that. Uh, we also haven't found the secret door that Felsen pointed out for us, so... Faith says, yeah, it's true, I, we haven't seen that. Also, this is something Faith would say, um... We have seen a chapel of death. We stayed away from the wall. We didn't see time reaching zero and falling back to the beginning, I don't think. Uh, we did ignore minions, but we haven't floated to the ceiling. And we haven't stabbed a door. And we haven't done anything about a viewer's eye or anything like that. Yeah. Those things haven't happened. Not that they will. So that's a good reminder, and I, I try to ask this periodically. But was there, what was the the ceilings deal in the grove? There was there an exit upwards or just no, just cave. All right. Yeah. In that case, carry on. My way, Lord Son. Okay. Um, Sorry about that, guys. I had to find the car key. It's all right. Caref carefully dodging the pitfall on the side of the door. Yeah, everybody carefully dodges that. 
and I go back to the intersection. And uh, Faith, uh, Faith, she says, yeah, in the corridor I was looking up there, uh, there's a door that falls into a pit, and then there's a corridor on the other side of it, but I didn't see what was beyond that. All right. Oops, I'm moving the wrong thing, sorry. Oh, and I've been moved back. Sorry. Okay, our Earth will go to the north. I guess this is north. You, uh, when you get right here, you see a, uh, a door. I'm going to pan this just for Mythic Mountains to be able to see. Um, you see a door, and the door has fallen in, and it's fallen into a rather deep pit. And then on the other side of the pit, there is a uh, hallway. I'd like to fire a crossbow bolt into the pit to test if it's an illusion or not. Uh, you do that, and you hear it clank against the door, actually, which is about 30 feet down. Uh, Does it look like there's any exits down in the pit? Because we encountered that previously. Um, you can't see from where you are, I would imagine, but that's because you're 30 feet up. You, in order to see that, you would need to go down into the pit. Okay, well, I'll throw my uh, torch with the light spell on it down into the pit and get another torch and have Faith light spell it again. Faith is like, ah, let me do that. And she takes her drift globe and she makes it go down in there. Well, so and acceptable. Uh, she has the drift globe move around. And indeed, you do see a pathway uh, Gosh, down at the it. bottom of the pit. That wouldn't happen. <sighs> yeah. So, without having wings, can we cross this pit, or would we need to do an athletics? I think we can just jump it, but the question is, does anybody want to look down in the pit hole? Exit. Uh, well, uh, Faith should probably go. I mean, she's yeah. got the glowy ball, and she can fly back up easily. She's like, okay, and she flies down. Uh, and she takes her glowy ball, and uh, I'm gonna. She's gonna disappear from sight. Whoa! I'm gonna take her thing. I'm gonna roll some dice. Um, she, uh, she flies back up with her drift globe eventually. Hey, Joel. And she says, um, I guess. she says, uh, yeah, uh, looks like there's a long, long tunnel that's been drilled out down there. It goes on a long ways. Hey, Thomas. Hey, sorry, I'm late. Hey, Thomas. So sorry. That's okay. Maybe. By the way, guys, if you guys are wondering who Morbid Cupcake is, this is Courtney. This is my girlfriend. Hi, Courtney. Oh, welcome Hi. to the Discord call. Um, she was here last week, too. <laughs> nice to meet you. She's learning D&D &D through us. All right. Right on. Um, we yeah. are the wisest of teachers. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like, oh, that's the best way to consume it, but okay. <laughs> Good news, new arrivals with corporeal bodies. While you are gone, we have short rested, so you're probably... You have at least one D12 for free that you can roll. Uh, Tom, um, uh, Catawan and uh, uh, Kriv. And then you can roll any number of your hit die that you want, or not. I Technically, they only get the free die if they roll at least one. Interesting. Hit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, anyways, yeah, she's like, yeah, there's this long corridor. Uh, or not corridor, I'm sorry. There's a tunnel that's been dug out down there. And as you come up here, you see another one of the uh, nearly uniform you're starting to discover. Ancient, uh, old, oil-soaked, heavy wooden doors. Oil-soaked. Oil stuff, dude. Yeah, oil. Well, what I mean is that it's it's gnarly and old and gross. Like it's just been sitting here for a long, long time. 
and it's just uh, yeah. I still like to um, have someone light their torch in a jar and try to burn the door down. Uh, I <laughs> didn't use the words oh, oil soaked. Like, I, hmm. I apologize. Probably that's not the best. Uh, my point is that it's more a, a better term would be petrified. And in fact, trying to light it on fire, you find that it doesn't do that at all. Both because probably there's not enough oxygen in here, and also because the door uh, is just like not got anything left that would catch on fire. It's just old, Arthur's, petrified, uh, nasty Arthur's door. I would like to inspect the door to see if there's anything strange about it. You, you do that? Odd keyholes or hinges or anything like that. <laughs> Um, you do that on this side of the door and you don't find anything. I will say, um, because you don't find anything wrong with it. When you open the door and you look at the back side of it, uh, you find that it seems to have been splintered in as if some heavy object slammed into it at some point. I have opened the door. And I just wanted to... I, I, I know you didn't say you opened the door, but I wanted to give you that information. Yeah, I was I was going to open the door once I knew there was nothing. Was there a... Cor there's no corridor or anything back here? Uh, yes, and then on the other side of the door, there's, there's, a, there's another corridor as well. Okay. Oh, gosh. We've got options has wings she can fly if the door <laughs> if the ground collapses and Dan's also lying on its feet if I remember correctly so I I'm uh best when there are people in between me and danger okay understood uh I'm just gonna I'm gonna be brave here guys Caper's gonna Arthur's walk backwards gonna, through Arthur's the threshold gonna, it's gonna go into you find area. another one of the uh, ancient corridors uh, of stone and um, uh, spider webs that themselves have probably not had an occupant, not even a spider in a very long time. And on the far end, you see a double wooden door. Oh, wait, no, and Caber like takes a second glance at his feet and they kind of takes a harder step. Like, I could have swore there was going to be another pitfall here. All right, well, let's keep going. I'd like to run my rapier along the ground in front of this doorway, just trying to look for any pressure plates or anything. You don't find any pressure plates on this side of the door. Uh, what you notice as you try to run your rapier along the bottom side of the door in the top, you notice that it stops. And it's almost like there's a tar. Uh, and you realize that there's no gap whatsoever. It's been sealed with some kind of like tar-like material. But the door is not locked. It's not good. Dap the door. The corridor. Uh, first, I'm going to hold my breath, and then I'm going to open the door. All right. Uh, you open the door. No, you can't run away, Arjith. You're already there. Oh, <laughs> of course. Um, and uh, you... And, like, smoke, like, billows out uh, from the door as soon as you open uh, this green mist and uh, you're holding your breath and uh, you will have to make a constitution saving throw because uh, you're going to have to really every time every movement so whatever your combat movement is if it's 40 feet or whatever you'll need to make a constitution saving throw to hold your breath um, that for everyone who's in the room no because he said he's holding his breath everyone else make a constitution saving throw Constitution saving throw. That is a 15 plus 4 for a 19. 19, okay. You're also holding your breath, uh, or are you able to... You start to pass out and go to sleep, but you grab hold of the wall and start pulling yourself up too, and you're able to try to keep moving. Kriv, you got a... Is that 26? Uh, 17 plus like 9 is 26. Same thing with you. And uh, who else we got here? Uh, Catawan. Hey. Catawan got a 12. Bro, you're saving throws. Something's <laughs> up. 
uh, mighty, Never fails. powerful spells. But Catawan falls asleep um, right here. And, um, and then all of a sudden you hear this. Uh... And, and then you see this. Let's see. I would like to take a moment to point out that that sound effect was called Rocks Fall, Everyone Dies. <laughs> it's, a, it's a saying. It's a D&D &D saying. Anyways, you see this thing, <laughs> and the door slams open on the other end, and uh, it's, it's rolling toward you, uh, taking up the whole length of the, of the corridor. Does this look like a living thing or like a statue? No, it's a huge elephant statue taking up the full space of the corridor, oh, and it's God. rolling on a huge like thing that that will like roll over somebody and flatten them. Oh God! Doesn't I, somebody have an immovable rod? I would like to rescue. Theron did, but he's gone. Yeah, oh, unfortunately, man. selling the wizards that would have been perfect. It's a great idea. I would like to attempt to save Catawan. And Arnith right. is going to attempt to save Kriv. Uh, Kriv's okay. You guys can try to make it. Oh, okay. I thought Kriv was asleep. So... I, I would like to release and an exhale only the verbal components for Far Step, and uh, which is a teleportation spell, which gets me 60 feet into an unoccupied space I can see. Uh and get out of the way of this thing. Okay, with Far Step, I'm going to say that you can as attempt to help Ardreth. So this is going to be, you can each make a strength check, uh, like an athletics check. Okay. I'm not, I'm not all that tough. Caper's more about his looks than he is about his actual muscles. I got an 80. Uh, you cannot drag, uh, you cannot drag Catawan. I will let you try to make it again, but if you do, you will also have to make another constitution saving throw at disadvantage. And then Ardreth got a 16 on that athletics check. You also failed, and so you will also have to either, either you'll have to leave Catawan and run, or you'll have to make a constitution saving throw at disadvantage Here. to try again. I asked if I could help Catawan, am I able to do that? Uh, yeah, you run up and say you would make the same check. So it's an athletics check. All right. Boy, howdy, I'm great at the athletics. Nope. Nope, that's a five. All right. All right. So Kriv you got... is going to try to save. Kriv, <laughs> Kriv <laughs> hold on now. Kriv, what is your movement speed? 40. Okay, so you have that choice in the beginning. If you want to try to help Catawan, you have to run to him make a constitution saving throw, and then make the check. At which direction okay. is... But you would have to do anyway because you're too far away. Okay, so I'm going to run over to him. I'm going to make my constitution saving throw. 15? Passes. And then I'm going to make, what did you say, an athletics Mr. check? Mr. Yeah. Kriv, I am going to give you my inspiration on this athletics check. Okay, you can. I have a plus 12 to athletics. Yeah, well, like a 16 or whatever didn't make it, so let's oh. let's try to save this guy's Fair life enough. a little. Fair enough. Inspiration, that's a re-roll, right? That's an advantage. Advantage, yeah. Roll twice, take the higher. 29. 29. Uh, yeah, so everybody's trying to grab uh, our, or not, sorry, Catawan. Catawan's a big bully, and um, they're, you're choking and coughing and about to pass out, and then Kriv just like runs through even though he's like you know like sickly and old and stuff and just like grabs him up as he's coughing and everything and you are running um and uh Hayon sees you all running out of this door is like mist green mist furls behind you r coming after you and he's like oh and like turns around and starts running as well and Faith also and everybody starts running um and this thing starts uh running down here and I'm going to say that Faith will note, hey guys, this mist will fall to the floor, but the only way through that we know of is down this pit. 
can I close the the door here? No. Behind us? Yeah, it, it's about to get slammed open by that elephant thing. Oh, the elephant can make turns? This changes everything. Yeah, it's going to go all the way up, at least to that door, you know, because the door was slammed into. To all be, right. I want to teleport to the opposite side of the elephant. Into the mist? In behind, So I'm behind the elephant. The, it, there's mist there. Well, that room is, like, full of mist. Yeah, okay. You might get trapped between the elephant and the mist. Okay, I under, did I understand it correctly? Which way is the elephant coming from? Which way is it going? It's coming, uh, so it's going this way, but that doesn't mean there's not mist behind it. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's coming down to this corridor. Right. So if, if we retreat to this corridor and close this door, it doesn't have any effect. You are you can try. I would like to try. Yeah, that's what our goal is, I think. All right. Uh, you all... That. If you all move into this corridor and start with that. Yeah, because I teleported the... Oh, Hard Earth is just rolling. All right. What happens is uh, when you when you do that uh, and you put your... Um, close this door, all of a sudden it slams open uh, and uh, you're, you're thrown back against the wall uh, and your ears are ringing uh, and your nose is choked with blood and dust as this thing keeps barreling down onto you. And the mist keeps coming after you as well. And faith the is like... The elephant can make turns. It can make turns. Uh-oh. And, uh... uh faith is like, uh... Yeah, we, uh... We don't have anywhere else to go. I think we should go down into this thing. Yeah, yep. Ardrith is rolling. I'm Team Pit. Let's take a pit stop. I'll move you over there because it's bound, it's locked. Can you move your token, Joe? I can now, yeah. Okay, good. I'll move Hay on down there. I'll move you down there. All right. Man, Catawan. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> Punishment from the D and D gods for being late. Yeah. There you go. Is Catawan still out? Is he still unconscious? Oh uh, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, good point. Let's see. Uh, unconscious, and I will determine how long. He is going to be unconscious for. An hour and ten minutes. Okay, so would that make me encumbered? Oh, yeah. Okay. But you could say that you keep dragging him if you want. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Is that a... That, that, um, okay. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, I'm not going to leave him behind. <clears throat> yeah, or you guys can just take another short rest, but... Um, Yeah, I think would've... anybody lost any hit points there, so. But I mean, if we want to wait for him to wake up, we might as well. Uh, I'm, you I'm know, fine I... to just carry him. Yeah, I, I think I might be able to throw a lesser restoration at him if he becomes important later. But for now, he he, he can use his rest. Kaver took out his notebook and pen and ink and starts writing down the ballad of the elephant fart that almost killed us all. Tracks. I feel like it should be a limerick. Ah, uh, I decide the tone and cadence of this <laughs> tale. Thank you, sir. All right, all right. I'll need to get defensive about it. I'm, I'm honestly my own worst critic. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh, I, he uh, quickly folds it away and quite. Uh, he, I think he blushes a little bit too. <laughs> Kaber, I must have you at at the castle. Um, gonna have to play. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I can do that. Sure, if I mean, if if we you know stop Dane and survive, and you know the whole universe isn't erased. That uh, if you know, and if my schedule clears up, I'm. Probably have a, quite a backlog 
difficult not, you know, not being there for so long. This tunnel, it emerges into another 10-foot-wide corridor that goes to the east. Uh, there's a door here made from a giant great block of adamantine metal. Um, obviously very thick and uh, also has not rusted despite uh, the years. Um, it seems to have... It looks flawless and shiny and not rusted. Um, there are three slots uh, next to each other um, and otherwise no apparent way for it to open. Can you describe the slots? Uh, I would say that uh, shape-wise... Oh, you can't see this. Um, hmm. Well, maybe if I put a... Maybe if I put a drift globe over there, can you... Can you see that? Yeah, like two spaces on either side. Alright, what about now? Yeah, sure. Okay, so... Uh, if the door were like this, it's a perfect block of metal, shiny, flawless, no scratches, uh, doesn't look like there's any gap anywhere. Uh, it looks like maybe the metal extends beyond the walls of the, of the tomb further out to either side up and above and below. Uh, and then the only thing there are, are per three perfectly equidistant and parallel slits and actually they're probably only about they're not that they're not even that big they're only they're very thin and they're probably four inches tall and less than an inch wide Caber says I have an idea everyone stand back you gonna stab the door you should stab the door what I was gonna do? Why did I take my thunder, Dan? I was just about to say. I mean, we may never know what he will do. Uh, good, yeah, good cover up. That was really, man. I should have you in place, uh, Ardrith. We need. Dan's pretty good too. We'll have him. Uh, okay. Anyway, yes. Uh, Caper, I would like to cast Mage Hand and use a dagger and stab a dagger into the door from a distance. Faith looks at it and she's like, "Wait, wait, wait! Don't do that." Why not? And she takes out her bag of holding, and she's got, like, three swords that are the same size, and they would occupy the space. And she's like, here, use these. Okay. I will do that. Uh, do you use Mage Hand to... Okay, do you do one at a time? How do you do it? I, I think... Yeah, I mean, that's what I'll try to do. That way, I'm at just. Okay. Um, when you put the first one in, um, it uh, it start you start to hear a noise and a rumble, but then it stops. And when you try to put the next one in, it doesn't seem to fit. Okay, I'll take the first one out and I'll put the third one in. Uh, the same thing happens. It seems like when you put one in, something starts to happen and then it stops. Okay, uh, Kaber will then pull all the swords back one at a time with Mage Hand, because Mage Hand's not that strong. Tie them all together, <laughs> and he's going to pick them up and then rear them over his head, and, he, like, in an in a attempt to... What, imagine, like, it looked like somebody was, like, about to throw a spear, and he's going to throw all gonna... three of them. He's going to throw all three of them at the door to try to and try to do it at a distance. Well, that's going to be a very difficult uh, performance check. Okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, okay. Performance. You barely met it. So he does this trick where he like ties the swords together and they fly around the room a little bit. And uh, Ardrith, a blade almost slices into you because you're standing next to him. And then these blades, like he swings them and they all simultaneously hit into the into the slots at the same time. And then like you hear this like shuddering and shaking and the entire wall like rotates and it moves off this, this whole door.
And uh, on the other side, you see a huge, open, dark chamber with many, many pillars. It's colored in pastels on the walls, uh, like a um, the uh, the columns at the top look like branches of trees, as if it's trying to simulate a forest. Okay, this should be the room for which the riddle is: stab the door and look upon a room. Is nothing more to the viewer's eye. I don't, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Either something is hidden, or everything that we see means nothing. I can't talk right now, right? Ah. <laughs> uh. You are still asleep. I'll say you woke up, though. I'll say it's been an yeah, hour of exploration. Sorry about up. that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, man. I needed that nap. <laughs> oh. He, uh, oh. he, he, I, I think he wakes up. Like, Kriv was going to slap him a little bit, <laughs> wake him up, and he somehow accidentally woke up the second before Kriv slapped him. And so he wakes <laughs> up, and his, his first awaking uh, experience is just getting. Slapped right across the mouth. <laughs> Boy! Oh! What was that for, oh, crew? Oh, oh, oh. I'm so, oh no. Oh god. Oh, I'm so sorry. I for thought you were asleep. Uh, I was, and then I was awake, and then you slapped me. Oh god. Crib, you know oh. the penalty now. Get the kiss and make up. Oh, I don't know. He, yeah. he like pretends to go in, but then he like makes lightning crackle across his teeth. This is oh no! <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. We're even. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. Wow. Oh man. <clears throat> okay. Um. <clears throat> what if I'm it's what to... if it's something we're supposed to hear in the room? If there's nothing more to the viewers' eye, uh, what if it's something that we're supposed to hear? Oh. Uh, Caper would like to look at the pillars and see if it looks like an orientation of any type of instrument that he's aware of. Uh. Nope. Uh, but as you look in, uh, you can feel a gentle breeze in the room, constantly flowing at the same rate, gently, in the same direction. It's going this way. I'd like to take a moment to take a piece of parchment from my notebook and fold it into a paper airplane. And while he's doing this, you all can act on something else. Because <laughs> Caber has to like, get down in a cross-legged position and focus to make a perfect paper airplane. <laughs> he has no idea what an airplane is, but he does know what an ornithopter is. So, Very big paper which is ornith more complicated. Paper sparrow, rather. Yeah, that's true. Bird. Paper bird. You make an origami bird, and uh, what do you do with it? I would like to gently toss it on the breeze and see if it goes any direction. It does. It goes uh, this way and lifts it up in the air. Does it seem to, like, leave through any vent or anything? Does it what? Does it leave through a vent, or, like, does it have an exit point? You can't see where it went because it's dark here. I would like to fold another one and then have faith <laughs> put light on it and then throw it. Okay, uh, I'll use her drift globe. Um, where do you throw it? Uh, along with the breeze. See which direction the breeze is going. Um, it eventually starts to fall down to the floor, but then it hits one of these pillars. And as soon as it hits a pillar, it goes like this, and it goes... And then it falls back up, and then it starts flying up into the air. And then it goes up here. And then you see one of those devil faces like you saw in the beginning and it goes into the devil's the the mouth of the devil's face and it disappears okay scary don't touch the pillars that are my notes
Or maybe... Hmm. Ignore my minions from times ago and float yourself to the ceiling. Oh, that'd be horrible. That'd be just cruel. Hey, hey, one of you guys with courage, you should you should go check out where the draft is coming from. I'll do that. The truth will go investigate. And I'll be even more brave and follow him. All right. The arrows, the arrows are indicating which direction the breeze is moving or the breeze is coming from. It's the direction it's moving to. Okay, so I'll go this way. You do you touch the pillars as you go. Um. <clears throat> no, I'm gonna steer clear of the pillars. I'll try not to touch any. So the breeze is coming from this wall up here? Uh, no, um, you can feel it coming from further ahead. It feels like it's kind of like going out from something. Uh, and as you, uh, as you approach this open area, you see this. <clears throat> oh my. Um, contrasting with the pastel colors of the floor and the pillars of the hall of this pillar forest in stark blackness, a huge dais on the south wall, atop of which sits an obsidian throne inlaid with silver and ivory skulls. Upon the throne rests a crown of gold and a scepter of electrum, with a golden knob on one end and a silver cap on the other. Guys, this is the thing that Felsane's warned us about. Nobody touch the crown. Let me see and, if I have the old school art. And the stick is very dangerous. Crown cannot leave the room. And the silver end of the rod cannot be touched to the crown. Which just makes me want to do it more, but let's... Definitely do not do that. Let's exercise of restraint today. I like how in the old art, there's little grimmel things holding on to the skulls. Oh, yeah. They're like, no, this is mine. Alright, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to use Mage Hand to try to lift the scepter away from the crown. You lift the scepter away from the crown. And I would like to bring it to myself. And, alright, you have the scepter. And also... Approve. Oh, sorry. Of note... Um, there is a... Um, a, a Kriv, make a perception check. Okay. Perception. 17. 17. Okay. Uh, so that I don't have to look through my notes here. <laughs> what, yeah. Felsane, did Felsane say to not touch the silver part to the crown? Yes, she says don't touch the silver end of the crown. Okay. Um, then, don't touch the gem. There is says, a... Yeah. So the, there's the throne with a crown on it, and then um, Kriv, you notice a little section of the uh, dais, like the platform here, that's different right. than the others, that has a little crown <clears throat> inside of it. Like a crown symbol. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna walk over and take a closer look at it. Does it look... It lo <clears throat> I'd like to investigate it and see if I can tell, like, if it depresses, uh, if it's like, what the differences are, if it has less dust on it, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, it's a panel um, that goes into a reset recess, and then you actually can see, as you look more closely, that it widens. So, um, if there's like a little 
a little panel here with the little crown, you can now, as you look more closely, see that there's a larger area, uh, a gap on either side here that's connected to it. And it's got a crown mm -hmm. on it? How, yeah, like a symbol same? of a crown. Okay. So it's, it's a symbol. It's not like the size of the crown that's sitting up on the throne. Yeah. Okay. And I'm Kaber, to... I will also describe... To, oh, sorry. Go, well, actually, let me get back yeah. to you. Kaber, you yeah. see uh, this. I'll show you the old school <clears throat> art first, and then I'll describe it. I got all of the advanced Dungeons & Dragons art and took it all and put it into this module with the new school art so that we had both. Cool. Um, because the old school has like almost, it, it's actually intended in tournament play to like hand out the picture for people to look at. And the modern module doesn't have that. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, looking. You see, Kaber, strewn in the southeast corner, a heap of charred bones and skull. Uh, crisped and blackened remains of clothing, gear, and armor. Um, and you see a huge glowing orange gem in the center of all this destruction. It says, don't touch the gem. That's what she said. Uh, I wonder if she means that gem or the gem in the crown. Probably that gem. Maybe, maybe the gem with the charred corpses. Maybe. But she also said, don't touch the crown. Uh, so, Kriv, do you point out the crown to anyone else, or you just kind of keep it to yourself? <clears throat> I'm, I think I'm still examining it kind of quietly right now. Um, I, I mean, I've, like, just, in re in game time, like, I've just walked over in the last couple seconds. Right. Um, uh, I think Kriv would just shout out what he found, though. Okay, and and I think Kriv gives a, cat, like, makes, make, meets uh, Ardrith's eye and, like, gestures him over with his head. Give him, like, a, not, like, come hither nod sort of thing. To come look at it with him. <clears throat> and then he's going to, uh... Press it. Press it, uh, with your hand? With my mage hand. Press it with your mage hand. Okay. Uh, nothing happens. Because it doesn't go in or because it applies more than 10 pounds of reverse pressure? Um, you apply the mage hand to it and simply nothing happens as if it were mere stone. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to walk up and put the crown on. Uh, you put the crown on. Um let me describe what happened. You said you put it on your head? Uh, well, I'm going to pick it up first, and then if nothing crazy happens, then I'll put it on my head. All right. Let's nothing happens. Like NBK. But suddenly, this happens when you put it on. Uh... You suddenly are able to see, like an infrared like predator vision, as far as you can see. I I can. Yep. Oh, very interesting. No one else can see that. No one else should be able to see that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wow. I say, um, uh, yeah. I don't think I say anything. I'm taking it all in. Kaber comes down, and he's like, Hey, there's some doors at the far end of the room. Yep, there Kriv. are three doors on the far end of the room. Kriv, and... you all right? Uh, I, I, Kaber gets paranoid, and he hides the scepter behind his back as he sees Kriv just like, staring. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me, uh, send a whisper to Kriv, and you guys keep talking. 
How many doors? What kind of doors? Uh, there were three of them, and it was really dark. All I had was my candle, but I found three doors. Also, there's another one of those demon faces on the other side of the room. Uh. Do, do we know where the wind is coming from? Did we discern that? Cambridge just points at the throne. All right, windy throne. Yeah, you probably passed gas a long time ago. Yeah, and you can feel the uh, wind coming strongly from uh, the throne, and in fact, it's coming from these uh, these gaps, and then around the back side of the throne. And uh, it, there's these jets, but then it and then it kind of like vortexes out, and then it hits the pillars, and then starts <coughs> to go out to the sides and up into the air and to the left and right. Use the scepter. Chin stroking. And Faith yeah. says, but not the silver end. Yeah. <coughs> okay, everyone get back. Kaber has never been so nervous in his life. Beads of sweat pour down as he holds the scepter at arm's length, careful not to touch the silver end, but with the silver end towards himself, is going to gingerly step up to the throne and... I don't know. So, did you say that there are like jet inlets that where the air is coming out of? No, there's like gaps on the side. Uh, there's um, there's kind of a gap where the uh, little crown is, and then there are bigger gaps down below it. Okay. Uh, so he, so I can see the crown. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and touch the gold into the crown inlet. You touch the gold, the gold end to the golden crown, and all of a sudden it goes, and it slides in, and then like there's this other mechanism where it suddenly like, you know, like the stairs kind of like knock down. And there are these big <coughs> stairs that go down in front of the throne into a hallway behind it. And Kriv, I can't, I can't show this in the VTT, but that is complete inky blackness on the other side. You can't even see. Uh, down that uh, that hallway. Oh, and they they can see down it. They can. And I cannot. And all this is just from holding the crown, right? I thought you said you put it on your head. Uh, I think originally I did, so we'll let, we'll go with that. So I am wearing the crown. All right. Do not take the crown. Out of the room. That, yeah. That's supposed to be bad. That was that was like direct orders from God Felsen herself. Oh, don't take the crown out of the room. Yeah, it's it's the crown must remain in the kingdom, which is only one room. Yeah, kind of pathetic, honestly. Can't really <laughs> keep <from> rubble. <laughs> well, it's more of a kingdom than I have. I mean, I'm just saying, like that's. Uh, it's. I mean, Ardrin has more. For now. You're muted. Did it say the crown has to stay in the room or in the tomb? In the room. In the room. Hmm. So either I stay here with the crown or, I mean, if you guys... Uh, and what's so great about the crown? Do you feel good? You make you... Do you feel uh, like you've, you've achieved self-actualization? I don't, uh, I doubt that last one. Uh, other than that, generally fine. Uh, I mean, I generally feel, uh, terrible, <clears throat> so it's hard to tell. But, um, nothing, no superpowers that I can tell of, and no limbs falling off. Felsane okay. said, don't use the silver end. What if we use the gold end? Oh, I, I, that's what we did. We used the gold end of the scepter. I'm, I'm meaning on do all this. the crown on Crib's head. Uh, I'd rather we just avoid that altogether. Uh, I feel like that's a bad idea because 
Yeah, Why? I, we I obviously... think we've won the room. I think we've succeeded. We just need someone brave of heart and stout of constitution to walk into this chamber ahead of me. Um, Kriv is going to take the crown off of his head. <clears throat> you try, then... but you are unable to make it budge. Oh, God. <laughs> well, uh, fellow adventurers, we seem to be in a bit of a pickle. Uh, Direheart, do you have anything for the situation? I'm looking, I'm looking. You see, you see Catawan pull out this massive book out of his satchel, and he's like, hold on, I think I have something. Uh, uh, I have something too, but center. it's, it's uh, pretty up there as far as my yeah. go. Kaber Ardrith has, has requested the scepter. Uh, we're not touching the crown, your your honor, your highness, your, your masters, sir. Well, saying said, not the silver end. I, I, I say neither end. I think we've already used the scepter. I think. I have it. Okay. I cast remove curse on Kriv. It fails, and you hear laughing. Uh, oh no! It was uh, worth a shot. I appreciate the attempt. We will remember you as you were. Uh, oh, wait, who wants to go first into this chamber? Who isn't wearing a crown? I'd like to try one more thing. I'd like to uh, cast the spell evil and good on the crown. Uh, it also does not work. <clears throat> there seems you hear laughter. It seems like there is something that is actively empowering this. Is it the gemstone in the corner of the room? Uh, you're not sure. Uh. Well, I hate to suggest this, but, uh... Well, no, we can't leave Kriv behind. Uh, pulls Kriv off to the side. Yes. You guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, he's actually going to uh, speak to speak to Kriv and Draconic. Haber can hear Draconic. <laughs> <laughs> Or just doesn't know okay, that. well that's fine. <laughs> just doesn't know that. <laughs> it says to Kriv, Volpal. I think it has something to do with the scepter. The scepter and the crown were together. To touch the scepter to a copy of the crown, Felsane said, "Don't use the silver end." may be able to help you if we use the golden end. I want your thoughts on the matter. Okay, so because if you go down, I'm going with you. I... I think it's worth a shot. Don't know what all we have to lose at this point. The crown's stuck on my head. There's no way to do it by spell, and uh, according to Felsane, we can't uh, leave the room with it, so I, I say we try whatever we can. It'd be hard-pressed for it to get much worse. Kaber, who's carefully eavesdropping, I'd like to take a moment and think, when I cast Legend Lord, did I learn anything about the Scepter or the Crown? I don't think it would be possible to know um, about this sp specific thing. Um, well, I didn't know if there was like any legends or lore attached to them where I would have right. known. Um, what was the question? I was trying to remember the question that you asked for Legend Lore when you cast it. It was about the Lich. It was about the Lich specifically. Okay. So, um, you discovered 
like everything in here is a trick. Um, greed is how most people seem to perish here. Um, this is intended to try to wear you down if it can't kill you and expend your resources. Um, there are lots of magic objects uh, and people have that have survived know that there are objects of great magical power here. And you can tell easily that this rod is immensely valuable. Like, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of gold. Like, this is like a, a thing of magic and power and uh, is extremely valuable. Um, um, it... Uh, I, 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 think, I think one thing that's obvious is, like, Felsane is not trying to trick you. <laughs> so you got that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else you would even know. What, what could you know about this? I, I don't know. No one would have known anything about this crown that I could... That w I don't think anyone would have even made it this far. Like, you are you are maybe the only people that have made it this far in the history of Orth. We, we do know that uh, some not trivial number of people made it here previously because there's evidence of them around the gemstone. Yes, but they didn't make it back out. <laughs> uh, well, with information, and that's the key. They didn't make uh, it back out. Abra is going to like not even acknowledge their conversation, uh, as to not draw attention to the fact that he's eavesdropping. But he's going to go ahead and just leave the scepter on the throne, and then follow Din into the corridor. Um, I will. You guys can decide what you want to do with Kriv and think about it. In the meantime, I will describe what everyone but Kriv can see in this corridor. Uh, there's a narrow passage here. It starts out about five feet wide and then widens to ten feet. Uh, the walls are untarnished and gleaming copper panels further ahead in here, set between rare woods inlaid with ivory. It's beautiful. Uh, it has a silver ceiling formed to reflect and amplify the light that's brought in. Uh, the chamber widens uh, as you get further in and there are a set of gently sloping steps that lead upwards. Six steps from nearest to farthest, made of onyx, pink marble, lapis, black marble, yellow serpentine, and malachite. That's what you see in this foyer of this, this <coughs> grand, grand chamber that leads up to stairs. And caber no from wind in this chamber. Nope. Yeah, no wind. And then, uh, Kaber, from where you are, you can see at the top of the stairs as well. And at the top of the stairs, you see um, Oh, I should also note that on the... Let me find here. One, two, three. On this step right here is a key. And it looks exactly like the key um... It looks like the key that you found in those vats that you assembled. It looks like that. Um, yeah, and then there are a huge set of stairs on the other side of that. And there is a um, uh, the huge set of, uh, like, a double metal doors. And a trying to find here valves that doesn't really explain there are these valves that come off the side on either side and they meet in front of the door to a cup uh, and in the cup is a, uh, a hole that looks like a keyhole Now I'll go back to Kriv. What are you guys going to do? Drith notices the scepter. Very carefully picks it up. He puts his hand on Kriv's shoulder and... Kriv, are you sure? Are you certain of your decision? 
You trust me. I trust you. Do it. Uh, Ardrith wraps his arm around Kriv and embrace, closes his eyes, and very slowly touches the gold end of the scepter to the crown. Uh, you touch a golden scepter to a golden crown, and all of a sudden, the crown clinks to the floor. Woo! Nice. Man, that was much better than my idea that I was going to do. <laughs> puts the rod back onto the throne. Leave the crown where it lies. Good call, Joe. Damn. Very man. good. Very nice. And we are going to follow the rest of the group. Yes. Oh, I was like, yep, we may die right here. I'm out. Figured uh, we might explode. Kriv gives I didn't uh, think that Felsane was like, do the silver end. Like, right. well, okay, we won't use the silver end. Caver turns back to Ardrith. And he's gently... Like, oh, not wait, gently. hold on. That Something happens before you guys get there. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What were you saying, Caber? Caber turns to Ardrith, uh, gives a slight bow, and says, And that's why you're the king. And not me. Um, Faith and Ardrith, as you get here to this key, all of a sudden you feel an invisible force, like... <laughs> like pushing you back from the key. And you can make a um, weird. Uh, you can, however, uh, make a. Um, I guess I have to look this up. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, make a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. And I'll do it for Faith. I don't have her character sheet, but I mean, Wisdom is her dump stat, or, or her main, sorry, her main stat. And you so. get a, a plus some number because Faith is nearby. We'll just say it's plus. Is it a plus? It's plus four. Thank you. Okay. That's what I was thinking. All right, she passes. Okay, well, that gives me, with the plus four, that would give me a 22. 22. Okay, so you guys both pass. Uh, but something is, uh, uh, but you feel like you're being pushed back and you hear whispers in your mind. You're fighting them off. You're not letting yourself listen to them. Uh, you all see this happening to them as they approach the key. Well, I doubt dispel magic's going to work here. Why oh, I'm backing up. <laughs> Very confused my senile old age <laughs> I would like to take out one ball bearing and just kind of throw it down the hall you easily throw it down the hall and it bounces like as if nothing's going on can I mage hand the key to us um, you do, but as you start pulling the key closer, it starts, although the mage hand is fine, it starts, like, pushing you back, and you start to hear whispers, and you can make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. I mean, I think I just drop it so I can... <laughs> you can do that. <coughs> you can push Dang. it back and drop it. That's fine. Okay. Um, do we even need this? I think Chaver would pick it up and push it further if we can. Just okay. like shoot it with the mage hand. There is so, a keyhole, right? Could you yeah. pick it up with the mage hand and try to put it in the keyhole? I'd, I'd like to use the one that we got from the bat first. Honestly. It's not cursed. I so. think there's an invisible wall in between us and the keyhole. Is there? Or is it the key itself is cursed like everything else in here? That <laughs> could very well be a freaking issue. And we don't need to get greedy. We already have one key. We don't need to. Can I'll... can I can I mage hand the key I already have? I don't see anywhere else for us to go. Like, can I? Okay, so can I move the key away from us so we can make it way further into the room? Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I, we can go further into the room now. Yeah. I'd um... like to continue that so we can all okay get in here yeah you you can move it all the way up against the wall you know if you want okay 
All right, so can you re-describe what's in here? You said there's a cup and a valve and... There are these valves running from the floor and piping and stuff, and they go up into a cup. And in the center of the cup is a, uh, a key... Well, it looks like a keyhole. It's got a length depression, a depression of length, and then like a circular depression in the center. It looks like it would perfectly fit the... Um, one of the keys. Um, and... Yeah. Do you try to look closer? Or what, what else are you looking for? Uh, and then you I, have this giant door here. That's what you see when you just come up onto the scene. I would like to try to figure out what this mechanism is. Is this a trap? Is this like a, a release of some type of pressure? Or is this like a... a no, I don't know. Is this like a mechanical thing? Or does this look like it's like some type of arcane thing? Or like um, what... You could make an extremely difficult arcana check. Well, can we all make that? Uh, sure. I'll just... Whoever has a good arcana, I'll just give them bark inspiration. Which is a d12. Hey, I got a natural 20? Or, no, it's a... Plus 10, plus 6. Yeah, plus 10, plus 6, plus 4 for the aura. 24. Okay. Uh, so, Din and Hayon, um, both of you all, uh, a couple of things that you can tell from this. Um, Hayon, you have studied this when you sent adventurers to locate and hunt down Finkel and his uh, clockwork lair. Uh, he had mechanisms <coughs> uh, similar to this. And uh, there, it seems like these pipings go both ways. And then you've seen things like this in your travels before. It looks like uh, pneumatic or flu or hydraulic pressure would go into this somehow, uh, or also it could go back out the other way and push the hydraulic or pneumatic pressure through the pipings in order to activate a mechanism. So what you can tell from that is it looks like this is a key and, uh, I mean, there is meant to be a key that goes in this to activate that. Can I get the key that is cursed far enough away that I can use the key that we have from the vat and insert it myself? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to do that. All right, you put this key on the far wall so it doesn't affect you, and you go on the far side of it so you can reach in, and even then you start to feel something strange as you get close. Uh, use the first key. Yeah. Okay. You put in the first key, and all of a sudden, <laughs> like there's a massive bolts and shock of energy, and um, you take with no saving throw seven lightning damage. Okay. And you're thrown against the wall. Okay. Are there any? Wait, um... no. You take double that because it's the first key. Take 14 lightning damage, unless you have resistance or something. Okay. Sorry, hang on. So the second key's got to do triple it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there. Are there any, like, levers or anything where we can manipulate the pressures and, and, the, and the piping and everything? No, in fact, uh, that's something you can tell also based on your roll. There are no levers or mechanisms anywhere else in this room. The mechanism, and you're certain of this, is definitely that hole. There's something that goes in that hole that activates, it, activates the mechanism. Ardrith is going to come and take a look at it. All right. Can I, can I tell what shape the hole is in? Is it like is yeah. it key shaped? Is it round? Is like what does it look like? Yeah, yeah. I will describe what exactly what it looks like. It is. It has a rectangular portion. Okay, like this. Whoops, whoops. Okay, I'm making everything worse. That's a... <laughs> roll 20 is making it real difficult. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to put the drift globe over here. Can you can you see that? Hmm? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to... I'll draw it over here. Um, small... So it looks like this, okay? Uh, um, maybe like this. 
I can't see what you're drawing over here. I can see the drift glow. Oh, there it comes. It's coming up now. And it's then, being slow. And then there's a there's a, like a, a middle portion that's circular and a bead on the other side of that that is uh, golden. Like right here. Stab that scepter into it. Ardrith Golden goes back to get the scepter. <laughs> Ardrith, that's what I was just thinking. I'm gonna go back and grab the scepter. Okay. So Ardrith is it goes big back, to grabs the, the scepter. scepter. Or is this like a keyhole? He comes back and he inserts the golden end into the keyhole. Uh, they're large. Telling piece. everybody to step back. And yeah, you you insert it, and although the the length of it uh, does nothing. It goes down into the center portion just fine, and it seats into it and connects to the golden portion, and and holy uh, crap, the door opens. The scepter is in fact the answer to all of our problems. Is there any way to get the key now? <laughs> I'm assuming that key is a false key. Considering that we we just opened the door, but wrong. Somebody, somebody's got some static. Is that me? Is it me possibly? There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Well, that's not as adventurous as I want to be. Let's see if I can pick up this key. Um, that's that key on the floor. Yeah. As you approach the key on the floor, all of a sudden it feels like it's pushing you back. Do you try to push through it and get it? Mm, no. All right. Um, you're able to move it out of the way if you keep using Mage Hand, if you keep using that, at least to where people can get around it, even though it's very uncomfortable. Uh, you come into this big open chamber, imposing with a silvered ceiling, just like the foyer. It's brightly illuminated by a reflected light, uh, like a mirror-like effect from the ceiling, from the, the silver on the ceiling. The walls are ivory with golden inlays. The floor is polished. I don't know how to pronounce this this gem, agate. Um, in each corner, I yeah. In each corner, there stands a statue of black iron, easily nine feet tall. And to the northeast, uh, one of them has a sawtoothed, two-handed sword raised to strike. In the northwest, a huge spike-ended mace. In the southeast, a wickedly spiked morning star. And the one in the southwest, a volg, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, near the center of the room is a large bronze urn, uh, filigreed in gold. A thin stream of smoke issues from a tiny vent and a brass stopper. And on the southern wall uh, stands a granite sarcophagus that appears to be damaged. Flanking it are two uh, iron chests. And um, there's one more thing. Da -da 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 -da. Let me just make sure. Excuse me, guys. Yeah, and you see written on the wall in bright magical letters, over here, you dummies. All right, that's the door. That's just rude. Um, just like Phil saying. Let me oh, make sure. yeah. That'd be Phil saying's door. All right, well then. Where is it at? And I'm going to show you if I can get roll 20 to cooperate. Okay. 30. Oh, let me show you the artwork. Oh, I was, can Ardith inspect this urn? Uh, give me just a minute. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Roll 20 is really I was, slow. I was accidentally muted and I had to my daughter and tell her to go on to bed. And we see this in here. And there we go. Okay, sorry. Now, what did you say you wanted to do? 
Earth wants to inspect the urn and the uh, sarcophagus. Okay, uh, the urn. Um, when you take a look at the urn... Um, it looks like a very nice, expensive-looking urn. And the sarcophagus, on the lid, it has glyphs. Uh, do you speak primordial? I do not. Then you do not know what it says. Um, the glyphs are inlaid with platinum. Um, can, this, can this urn be opened? Or is it like sealed? Or uh, you could, deal with it? You could try to open it. It has a, a, a stopper. So it's like just this thing and then it's got a stopper on top. Alright, I'm going to have Kriv... I'm going to have Kriv come over here with me. Kriv, join me. I, I'm going to try to open this. Alright. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, let me fix Kriv's oh, uh, gosh. predator vision. You no longer have predator vision. <laughs> he's, true, no longer he's a have dragon. He, sh he should have predator vision. There you go. Uh, could I perhaps read the primordial before we go opening strange urns? Just read the primordial. Uh, it says uh, in platinum glyphs, a Sararak. Oh, that was pretty straightforward. So it just says a Sararak? Mm hmm. All right, yeah. It seems like that's the burial urn of an incredibly scary person. <laughs> that defile uh, your leisure. I'm. I'm going to uh, start by trying to open it the easy way. <clears throat> the, I'm sure you said it has like a some kind of cap on it. Uh, yeah, you open the uh, the urn. Uh, yeah, I was gonna try. I was gonna pull on the cap and see if anything happened that way. Uh, you open it without any problem, and this thing comes out, and everybody can oh, roll for initiative. Oh, great. <laughs> Oh, it's real bad. Yeah. Of course, Ardrith has to has to do something stupid tonight. <laughs> so close. Oh, crap. It's a 19 it was the door. on my initiative roll. Are you doing a turn tracker for this, Ross? No. All right, uh, let's see here. We got Kaber with a 23. We got uh, Kriv with an 18. We got a Den with a 24. Nice. We got a Catawan. Man, Catawan. <laughs> Man. <laughs> hey, Electronic on. dice do not like me. No. What'd you get, Hayon? Um, 11. And we got an 11 for Hayon. And we got a 19 for Faith. Uh, the first person able to act is Din. Right. Well, I'd I'd feel bad if I didn't attempt it. Let's just uh, um, uh, rub our hands together nervously and cast Banishment. That was my first instinct. That's too. a that's a Charisma 18 saving throw. All right. Yeah. Um, that's gonna be a tough. Um, all right. Charisma 18. Oh, boy. She rolled a two. I hope we've all learned a lesson today. <laughs> <laughs> of <the> opening strange <laughs> urns. Let's open the sarcophagus now. Poof, and he disappears into another plane of existence. Um, he is also native to another plane because he's so an he's, elemental. He's just gone now, yeah. Which means he's gone, which is good, yeah. Okay, so the wall that says over here, dummies, uh, what's going on there? Um, looking at, at it, eventually you do see the outlines of what would be a secret door. Is there a secret opening? There Maybe is. Maybe a secret door handle? Well, I'm glad they had that banishment. <laughs> uh, yeah, and here, I'll do that for you. And yeah, there you go. All 
All right. What do you do? I I think Ern team can go first in the marching order. Once more into the breach. I don't want to go first. Steps in the hall. I'll go. I'll go I'm right on a six. You see like a obscenities drawn like graffiti along the wall until you get to this wall here. And uh, once you get the, there, uh, over here, dummies. And <laughs> yeah, there's there's obviously like a, um, and then it says like I heart Caber here, just on this wall. <laughs> and there's no oh. caresses it as he walks by. The obscenity is written in Felsane's hand. And a door opens when you caress it, because he knew that would happen. Or, I mean, she knew that would happen. Kriv is continuing to walk because he doesn't know what's going on behind him. And you uh, see on the other too. side this. Uh, guys, uh, I see something I don't understand. He shouts out. <laughs> not, not the text, I understand that. I meant this. And I will also describe it. Beyond the door is a smallish rectangular chamber with a ceiling that extends 25 feet overhead. There's a small depression a few inches deep, about two feet square in the center of the floor. Okay, now where is this? Is this over here where Kriv is at or down here where Kaber is at? This is where uh, Kaber's at, and uh, they, this is this is what you're seeing, Kaber, in this room. Kaber, don't get greedy now. We've come so far. We saw just a second ago that you put up. Obviously, our characters wouldn't know, but Kaber would be. I have no idea what it is. Um... Uh... So can you read what is in this room? I'll read it again. Um, there's a smallish rectangular chamber with a ceiling that extends 25 feet overhead. The old school image shows it better than the new, than the modern image. Uh, the old school image is exactly what it looks like. Um, in addition, there's a small depression a few inches deep, about two feet square in the center of the floor in the room. Um. Yeah. Okay. So is this where we go up? Okay, I'd like to look up and see if there's a new thing uh, that way. Let me see here. Look towards the ceiling. Oh, Kyle, you all right? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Got a kid in the bed here, so. Um, you, you do see the items uh, on the modern handout too. Uh, so those are those are in there, so you can see those things, okay. And uh, so you see a skull, uh, you see a uh, some treasure and things like that. Uh, when you look up, you see a ceiling about twenty five feet up. Can we have face and drift float up there? See if there's anything up there. Um, it's just, uh, just a room. Okay. So the old hand that has this, like, glyph on the wall. Do we, do we see that? Is that, like, a thing? Uh, yeah. Um. Puzzle. Let's see here. Sorry. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna bring it back up in case anybody's closed it. Uh, yeah, there is, like, a symbol on the wall. 
uh, and the stuff that's over top of the treasure and that skull that's sitting on that chest. Yeah, basically that image is what you see in the room. And then, and then in addition to that, about halfway into the room, there's a depression in the floor. Uh, that's, that's what you see. Can we make sense of the glyphs on the wall? Um, All of our brain cells <laughs> together? Uh, ever, you could make an arcana check. Whatever we do, let's not touch anything. I just made that mistake. I give up. I got 23. That's good. Get all your bad rolls out now. <laughs> I got a 23 on Arcana. A 23? Okay. Um, 24? Okay. Alright, anybody else? No? Alright. So, I oh, I can. Give it a try. Uh, Arbuth can roll an Arcana. Nope. He's actually decent at Arcana. Somewhat. Getting them, getting them bad rolls out. <laughs> That's an 18, so no. <laughs> 24 and get it. Oh, I forgot to add Felsane's play. Okay. Um, I think Kaber and Hayon, you can tell that this is a, uh, this is a a trick um and the magic on the wall is is what's empowering it um there are magical symbols uh that indicate like the power of the stars which you can see from this zenith uh with the star and then uh the the pentagram forms an actual ritual glyph and then uh the types of things on the ends represent the types of magic uh, and as you look closer, there are other glyphs in Primordial. Um, what it's doing is the, the treasure is real, but it's the treasure is concealing an effect of some kind. Um, and there's something else going on in here beyond the treasure that is what is real. So like it's 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 not that it's it's not that it's an illusion. It's that it's using the treasure to conceal something else. And then it's also concealing the thing that is actually real. That sounds kind of abstract. I don't know if that makes sense. The treasure is bait. That's what I'm hearing. And there are some so... schools of magic that are being used here. There is evocation, uh, transmutation... Conjuration and illusion. I think that's all of them. What well, do you think, Kaber? Just gonna move on? Hope Kaber's muted. And I'll bring Faith in on this one. She says, uh, "Yeah, but um, that is the door that Faith led us to." Or I'm sorry, that. Uh, ah, Felsane, let us do. Meaning that, like, her writings were over top of this door. Well, I guess I could use a dispel no. magic on this if, if y'all thought it was necessary. Are any of us gonna step in and see what's in there? Did we lose somebody? Lost Caber there for a minute. Pingalinging. Have you returned? Is everybody to back. Us? Yeah, who'd who'd we lose? Caber uh, for a minute. Yeah. He might be encountering technical difficulties. Yeah, he just lost power. He's on his phone. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Well, well, that's no fun. No one has any objections. I could throw some ball bearings in there. Sure, give it a try. All right. Uh, let's let's not want to hit anything. <laughs> this seems like a very very bad. It, it feels idea. like a trap. I'm inclined to pass it by, but. The problem is that Felstein isn't a good communicator, apparently. I'm not sure. I know that we know that she wanted us, our attention to be on this room. But whether that's because it has loot or because it's necessary to continue, I can, don't know. Can Ardrith step in and check this depression in the ground? Sure. You uh, step in the room, you look at the depression. Just being very careful not to touch anything. It, it looks like a key fits here in the ground. Yeah. A key of size similar to the keys that we've encountered previously? Uh, yep. It's the same size as the keys you've encountered previously. Okay, so... everybody gather round why would we all gather <laughs> to be safe <laughs> yeah, I'm not going anywhere near See, we tree. tried the we tried the first key last time right it like exploded with lightning damage yeah it wasn't a fan all right Earth request the second key if anything happens, it's going to happen to him, so... The, the second key you guys didn't get because anytime someone got near it, it pushed them away. Oh, we had already oh, But it's in the room back in the stairs where you came. Uh, but if anybody gets close to it, they'll have to try to make a wisdom saving throw. Who's got high wisdom? Or you I've have... Got plus, uh, I, I've I think got plus 11 wisdom. Cabrew would probably say, I can use my mage hand. So that's another option, obviously, because yeah. that's what he was doing before. Yeah, let's do that. Who knows? It might repulse any monsters hiding in there. So I also let's... have mage hand. Oh. There we go. So I'll use it in Cabrew's stead. We have lots of mage hands, but no mages. Yeah. Going <laughs> on random level in Warlock. Okay, so... Um... You bring the key in the room with Mage Hand and try to use it that way. Is that is that the plan? Uh, yeah. Okay. You go back out uh, to the is... stairs, and uh, and Kriv, you're doing this. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You use Mage Hand and you have the key away from you, even though it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, but you pull it back and keep everybody back. Uh, do you use the key and try to actually put it in the hole and turn the key? Yeah. All right. You do that with the second key, and it clicks, and the entire room starts to shudder and elevate, and anybody in the room is about to go up into the ceiling. Which room? The room that I'm in? The or? room. The room that you're in. Get out of there. Or okay. it might well, be good. And then the, the room elevates to the ceiling and reveals a completely different room that is a vault. And on the opposite end of the vault, a portal. And the vault is full of items and treasure. Okay, send the elevator back down. <laughs> you see in the room, um, 97 small gems worth 10 gold pieces in a pile. Three huge gems, 10,000 gold pieces, peridot, a 50,000 gold piece emerald and a 100,000 gold piece black opal gem and Ooh, a pile no of treasure a pile of clearly magical weapons <laughs> <laughs> we um, have we have touched too many things I, already as, as well as a it. pile of potions I think this magic is the real scrolls treasure. I think this is the exit <laughs> a magic ring on. a magic rod a magic staff and several other glowing items and and a portal on the other end. Run away! <laughs> no, I think this is this is good. Arthur says that in character. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> just... 
I think you're the only one in that room. I oh, came out there. when the thing was like, I'm gonna oh. slam into the ceiling. I like ran like hell out the door. What are the magical weapons that are there? Um, you see. How do we? Is that area open? Can we go into that area now? Or mm -hmm. yeah, you see an axe. Um, uh, a hammer. Uh, you see a uh, a sword. All of these things are glowing and made with like, you know. Obviously, like mithril and things like that, uh, rare uh, forged items, and a spear. Oh, this which says this. The saint says that greed is what kills people here. This is a room filled with treasure. So, let's not be greedy. By decree of the king. <laughs> <laughs> and this could be the end. And, yeah, and Faith is like, uh, this is where Felsane told us to go. And Ardor um, is telling people, let's go, let's head for the portal. Um, what were the weapons again? Uh, there, there was is... an axe, a hammer, a sword, and a spear. I, of course, need no additional weapons other than my beloved and handsome Snickersnack. Yeah, I'm all good, too. Let's Snickersnack, go. <laughs> like, vibrates uh, gratefully. When yeah, you say that. good boy. Fine, fine. I guess I don't need any more magic weapons. Get the hell out of this place. All the other weapons. Alright. So who goes through the portal first? I will volunteer to be greedy and pick up the gems. You pick up the gems? Yeah. Uh, you uh, have your arms full of gems because uh, there are so many of them and they're so heavy. Um, All right. Who had the? Who had that? Uh, that that new, fancy brand new bag of holding? I got a gem. Yeah. Ardor. Oh no! Or I'm faith. not touching the cursed gems. Okay, fine. Then give me the bag of holding, and I'll take ownership of all of this clearly cursed wealth. is just like so paranoid at this point I, I mean he just opened an urn and a freedy jumped out at him and well it was an like, urn with the I'm gonna name kill of a you. on it it was kind of you were asking well for I thought there. I thought I was we were gonna like release lich and be able to maybe <laughs> business and get that over with but it was not the lich Okay, so uh, we collect everything with the bag of holding, then. Okay, so what now? Faith has the gems or whatever. Or Do you... hey, I, I want to stick the the weapons in there too. Yeah, let's just let's empty this room. Sounds good. All right, you put all the items in um, in uh, in the bag of holding. And now I will be the first one to walk through the portal. This is still so ridiculously paranoid. All right, you see Catawan disappear into a portal. I'll follow him. Okay. Whoop. See anybody not going into the portal? Ardith is stepping through the portal. Hi. I'm going to <laughs> say, okay, before anyone else dies, now that they're all dead, let me actually make sure this is a portal, and I would like to use my detect portal ability to yeah. detect the distance and direction to the closest planar portal within one mile of me. That's this. All right, I go in. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, you uh, you step through the portal onto the other side, and you find yourself well into oh the other side God. of the uh, the fortress this, of Dane. Um, we did it. We beat Gary Guy Jax. <laughs> <laughs> I was so convinced that that freaking treasure was going to just like unleash all hell. So um, I will describe what you see on the other side here. We only have a few minutes left, but I would like to. You see um, 
another portal, uh, basically um, up and above in this fortress, um, and uh, otherwise a magic field that surrounds you. Uh, but you're back on the same plane of existence, uh, at least on the border plane uh, in the far northeast of the Vale. But that's the only thing you see here, is just another portal that leads on. You can either go back, or you can go forward, and that's it. Forward. Let's go forward. All onward right. and upward. Let's see here. may not have everybody's tokens. I'm not even close to have everybody's tokens. Let me fix that. Oh man, this is... Uh, let's see here. I got... Din, Faith, Kaber, Ardreth, Hayon, Catawan. I'm missing... There we go, there's Kriv, and now I can copy them. Ooh, nope, I didn't want that. Copy, okay, here we go. And you guys are here on this lake, right? You appear uh, on, this, uh, on this portal stand. Um, the bright lights of the shrine uh, uh, that you entered into this portal from the fortress, um, they fade as you feel a strange rushing sensation of teleportation magic, and suddenly the pressure disappears, and you feel the rush of cool air on your skin as you emerge into reality once more. As you pull away from your fellow adventurers and take stock of your surroundings, you see that you're on the shore of a great subterranean lake all of a sudden. The inky blackness of the cavern is broken only by the phosphorescent purple glow that shimmers across the surface of the water. And on the far side of the lake, hundreds of feet away on, on the other side, you can see uh, a cavern wall closing in um, right at a point where it seems to meet a temple um, where there's barely visible far across the lake some wavering lights. And that's where we'll end tonight. Oh gosh, oh. my heart.